When we talk about media, we seem to be obsessed with the final product. This is especially true with video games. From the moment a major title is announced, we want to dissect every single bit of information on it, trying to determine months or even years before it hits store shelves. Is it worth our time? But what we so often forget about video games, whether they be good, bad, fun, or boring, is that they are the products of real people. Even the worst commercially available games had at least one person working on them for hours on end. Or, in the case of the game that we're talking about today, had a team of some of the most talented individuals in the video game industry behind them. Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric is a part of the popular Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. Released in 2014, it aimed to offer a new, unique take on this classic series and ultimately failed to live up to that. In fact, it's now generally considered one of the worst games to ever have been made. This is the story of a project that aimed to change the world and just could not manage to do so. Welcome to the Art of Failure. The story of Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric is really that of the studio that made it, Big Red Button Entertainment. Specifically, we start in 2009 with two men, Daniel Are and Bob Rafai. Both of these men were already video game industry veterans. They were soon joined by fellow industry veteran Jeff Lander. Rafai and Are had gotten their start at Naughty Dog, where Rafai had served as the art director for titles such as Crash Bandicoot, Jack and Daxter, and Uncharted Drake's Fortune. Lander, meanwhile, had cut his teeth starting in the late 1990s by working as a game programmer at Activision and spent some of his free time writing about 3D graphics and games for publications such as Gama Sutra. These men would find throughout their careers that they got along quite well, and thus would leave their respective companies in 2008 to start their own gaming studio in El Segundo, California. This was Big Red Button Entertainment. The creation of Big Red Button was on the whole incredibly well received within the gaming industry. An article on GamesIndustry.biz from 2009 went as far to describe them as the new face of AAA and that the company consisted of a world-class team of game veterans. Our Fi, RA, and Lander's reputations preceded them, and from the outset the fledgling company seemed destined for greatness. Deals and partnerships were struck up with companies such as Emergent Game Technologies, and work was begun on several new, original game titles. Many believe that BRB had the potential to be one of the next big game studios. And then, nothing. There were reports of stunted development cycles occurring at BRB. Projects would be started on, work would begin, perhaps even some new members would be brought on, and then said projects would either fail to be greenlit or development would just fizzle out. Some major licensed titles were even started on, though these also never panned out. Eventually in 2010, R.A. left the company, later instead taking a job at Pokemon Go creator Niantic Labs, leaving Rafai at the helm. This supposedly continued for a couple years until 2011, when Big Red Button was approached by Sega. Sega was a game company famous for the Sonic the Hedgehog series. They had reached their peak back in the 1990s, where they had created systems such as the Sega Genesis, which had gone on to sell millions upon millions of units worldwide. The Sega Genesis in particular was famous for at one point being one of the best selling game consoles in North America. However, a series of poor business decisions had led to Sega in 2001 ceasing the creation of their own hardware and instead focusing on creating games for the consoles manufactured by their former competitors. Through all of this, their mascot and best selling franchise remained the speedy blue Sonic the Hedgehog. This series was famous for games that focused on quick platforming that tested the player's reflexes. Since their exit from creating video game hardware, however, the series had faced several ups and downs, with some games being critical smash hits, with others routinely making their way onto worst video game ever lists on the internet. It is unsurprising then that in 2011, Sega, despite being a Japanese company, would approach this American game developer to create a Sonic game. There was actually already precedent for this. 
In the early 1990s, Sega had formed a branch of their company in Palo Alto, California called the Sega Technical Institute, which would develop critically acclaimed titles such as Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and 3, but would also work on Sonic Extreme for the Sega Saturn, which was worked on for years before being famously cancelled in 1996 due to development issues. In a strange twist of fate, a bit after Sega struck their deal with Big Red Button, game designer Chris Sen would join the company. While most at BRB had not worked on a Sonic title before, Sen had famously worked on Sonic Extreme before it was cancelled. This was his first time working on a series since his experience with that title. Almost 20 years after Sonic Extreme, a number of people I had worked with previously were employed by Big Red Button. Through these relationships, I met Bob Raffi, the studio head. Though I was slated to work for them soon after, it wasn't until a little over a year later that I joined Big Red Button. We spent the next three years developing Sonic Boom. Originally codenamed Project Apollo, later Sonic Origins, and then Sonic Synergy, this new Sonic game was focused less on speed and more on team-based gameplay. Developed using CryEngine 3, a video game engine famous for its use on many popular first-person shooters, this cooperative platformer initially gave many involved a vibe similar to titles such as Jack and Daxter, which would make sense seeing as several of those at BRB had worked on those titles, particularly Bob or Fi himself. The game was also originally positioned to be an origin story of sorts for the Sonic series. Most of the Sonic games feature Sonic and his friends combating the forces of the evil Dr. Eggman. In this new title, the game would begin years in the past with Sonic and Dr. Eggman being friends. Dr. Eggman would be conducting research on time travel, an element that had played a role in several Sonic titles. However, during one foray into the past, Dr. Eggman would set off a butterfly effect, causing his past self, and thus current self, to turn evil and his and Sonic's friendship to be forever ruined. Though quite different from any other Sonic game that came before, this new concept was enough to excite many in the gaming industry about this new title. There was even an early tagline for the game that doubled as a vision for the title itself, of Stronger With Your Friends. One person to join the development team during this time was programmer Carl Henrik Skarsted, another industry veteran with credits on games such as PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, and later Pokemon Go and Shovel Knight. I had friends working at Bigger Button already, and they were telling me they, they were breaking this amazing IP and there's no way they could ever get on that IP, and then one of the guys broke and just told me, hey, it's a Sonic game. A week after I got the email from a recruiter, it's like really persistent and really wanted me to go there. And yeah, it was because I had all my friends there. <laughs> it's kind of weird that they didn't ask me. I did a quick interview there and just started a few days after. Yeah, that was right into working on Sonic. Their main goal was to develop a demo known as the Vertical Slice, which would then be shown to Sega of Japan in order to demonstrate how the game would work. Characters were given some redesigns during this process as well, so as to make it apparent which of each of the characters' specialized abilities were. For example, Knuckles the Echidna was a character whose gameplay would focus on his massive strength, so he was redesigned to be much more muscular. During this process, the team at Big Red Button continued to grow as the game was created on fairly advanced computers. The idea was that Sonic Synergy would be a title released for modern PCs of the time, were versions for the then new PlayStation 4 and Xbox One consoles to follow. By 2012, this was the path forward that those at the studio expected for the project. One console that they had no intention of bringing the game to, however, was the Nintendo Wii U, which along with being less powerful and less capable than its competitors from Sony and Microsoft, was met with overall lukewarm reception and sales upon its release in November 2012. Sometime around this point in 2012, Big Red Button would finally have what was known as the first playable ready, in which a short level could be played in which each of the characters' abilities would be shown off. The four playable characters here would be Sonic the Hedgehog, his sidekick and inventor friend Miles Tails Prower, powerhouse Knuckles the Echidna, and weapons-based fighter Amy Rose. Sega seemed impressed by BRB's work so far. However, they had some unexpected news to tell the studio as well. This would radically change the course, of Sonic Boom's development. Try to deliver like a, something called the first playable, which is like one level working and you can run, run around and play things. And Sega seemed to be okay with it, but they kind of had some other news that they needed to tell us in person. And uh, yeah, it turned out it was 
a Wii U exclusive and we're using CryEngine and there was no way that CryEngine would ever work on a Wii U without lots and lots of work. Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric started in development at American game studio Big Red Button Entertainment, with an all-star team of gaming industry veterans working on it. Hoops were high at the studio itself, until late 2012 when Sonic series rights holder Sega came to the studio with a surprise announcement. Yeah, it turned out it was a Wii U exclusive. In addition to this, it was announced that this title was going to be a subset of a new section of the Sonic series called Sonic Boom. In addition to the Wii U game, this was going to consist of a cartoon that would air on Cartoon Network in the United States, along with a Nintendo 3DS game, which Sega originally also wanted to be developed by BRB, but later instead decided to have developed by another California-based developer called Sanzaru Games. This caught the entire team off guard. With Sonic Boom being part of an exclusivity deal that Sega had signed with Nintendo for the next several years, their hopes and plans for the game to be a showcase of what the new generation of gaming hardware could accomplish were ruined. Worst of all, it would take substantial work to get the game to even run on the Nintendo Wii U. Due to CryEngine, the base gaming engine that the game was built on and required to run, not being able to work properly on that system. So it was built for PC, and that means you don't need to think so much about memory or loading speed because it's a hard drive. And it. When I started with loaded levels, it took 3 minutes and 15 seconds to load one level. I think I spent nine months on just trying to speed up loading, which means rewriting all the code that deals with loading things, and that's a huge amount of work in CryEngine. With the shift to the Wii U, many changes also had to be made to the story and gameplay. Sega made the team scrap the origin story idea, and they instead had to work together with the team working on the cartoon in order to come up with a new plot for the game. This new story ultimately would involve Sonic and company sporting their character traits from the Sonic Boom cartoon, stumbling upon an ancient evil known as Lyric the Last Ancient, a snake-like creature who in the distant past intended to take over the world using an army of robots. However, he was imprisoned in an ancient temple by a race of beings known as the Ancients, but was released upon being discovered by Sonic and friends. From there, it is up to our heroes to seek out the seven mystical Chaos Emeralds and stop Lyric, with some interference along the way from the nefarious Dr. Eggman. As drastic as the change to the story was, it was still rather par for the course for a Sonic title. However, the team soon realized that they were going to have to make some rather large changes to the gameplay itself, partially due to the issues of CryEngine, and it was going to have to be radically overhauled. What had originally begun as a four-player experience soon became a two-player experience. However, as work continued, Sega felt that the game wasn't fast enough and that it was going to need to have more fast-paced, speedy sections, even though the game had largely been designed without those in mind up to this point. One developer working on the project outright stated that the game is 80% exploration, 20% speed. Starting around late 2012, Sega also took more of a direct role in working with Big Red Button, going so far as to remove one of the lead designers on the project and establishing a semi-permanent presence at the Big Red Button office. At one point, a designer on the team had to step down and Sega decided to fill the role with one of their own producers instead of having Big Red Button fill it themselves. This did not bode well for morale at the studio. Uh, I, th I think we were kind of deflated because we built all this arc uh, for the first table, and um, we were thinking it's going to be a great frame rate and it's going to have all these lush environments and lots of detail, and then kind of having to walk back one generation of hardware. Eventually, the decision was made to scrap the multiplayer aspect of the game altogether and to try to repurpose it into a single player adventure. The concept of blazing through a world presented many design challenges when delivering the multiplayer aspect of exploration and speed. With high hopes and a lot of promising research and development towards a truly multiplayer experience, we ultimately changed directions and completed a largely single-player experience in the final stretch of the project. Even with the changes in gameplay styles, there were still many issues getting the game to run properly. Yet, in February of 2014, the first trailer of Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric, now given its final title, was released to overall positive reception. The game looked much as originally intended and seemed to run quite smoothly. 
However, it was noted that the gameplay shown was of a quote-unquote development build, and in reality this version of the game was not running on the Wii U, but rather on a PC. CryEngine still had many issues functioning on the Wii U. It was just not designed with that platform in mind. Programmer Carl Henrique recalls having to spend most of the last nine months of the game's development trying to get CryEngine to run smoothly on Nintendo's hardware. That was the last nine months. I was just looking at, oh, here's how much technical debt we have, which is basically engineering work that isn't done yet. And if I don't start today, we're not going to be able to ship the game on time. With all of these issues that arose with making the game Wii U exclusive and having it go through a near complete redesign, Sega remained firm in the game having a release date of November 2014, so to have the game available for the Christmas shopping season. The hope was that this title would not only be a success for Sega, but due to the exclusivity deal with Nintendo, would also be something that would push system sales for the statically selling Wii U. Even in the year up to the final release, there were calls from some involved at BRB, such as Scarstead and Sen, who felt that the game should outright be switched to a different game engine. It was still not running smoothly, and was played with numerous issues. Some of these calls even came after the game was showed off to mixed results at the E3 trade show in summer 2014. However, the majority at BRB and Sega Lite felt that too much work had been done with the CryEngine version of the game at this point, and that, for better or worse, they could not start programming nearly from scratch with a new game engine. As it got close to release, workdays at BRB got longer and Sega took an even closer approach to the game, working directly on the title itself alongside with those at BRB. This would result in an overall feeling, as described by several involved at Big Red Button at the time, of being constantly demoralized. In the early days of the project, there was a lot of interaction between the different parts of the development team, with new and different ideas encouraged to be suggested by everyone involved. However, by mid-2014, designers were often kept mostly isolated from the rest of the team, and it seemed that Sega themselves felt that instead of letting the game evolve and change more, it would have to strictly adhere to the ideas already decided upon. This took a toll on workplace culture as well. Early in development, those involved would often talk about video games that they played outside of work, and would often talk about what they liked and didn't like about those titles. However, as progress continued on Rise of Lyric, people talked less and the workplace itself began to feel less open to many as a result. In the year leading up to Sonic Boom's release, staffing contracts at Big Red Button began to expire, which the development company decided not to renew, thus letting over 50 people go from the company, and bring the main development team down to fewer than 20 people. After a certain point, Sega demanded that major work cease and that polishing begin, though the game was still having numerous performance issues caused by trying to run CryEngine onto Wii U, despite months of work done to try to rectify this. Several weeks had to be spent searching for bugs and errors within the game, with some nearly game-breaking issues not being found until the final days of development. Extra hours of blood, sweat, and tears were poured into the project, and for better or worse, BRB and Sega managed to meet their scheduled release date. On the 11th of November 2014, Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric was released for the Nintendo Wii U in North America, with releases in the following weeks in Europe, Australia, and Japan. Despite the many issues that arose during Sonic Boom's development, Big Red Button's problems were only just beginning. In 2011, Japanese video game company Sega approached American studio Big Red Button Entertainment to create a video game based off the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. Despite all of the issues that arose during its development, Sonic Boom managed to meet its scheduled release date of the 11th of November 2014 in North America. Despite making it to release, the game was poorly received at best. Critic Mike Reparaz of popular video game news website IGN would say of Sonic Boom, Sonic is slow when you play as friends. Might be one of the most unappealing sentences I've ever written. But it neatly sums up my experience with Rise of Lyric. Its exploration is so-so, its brawling is tedious, its characters are annoying, and the only stages where it feels like a Sonic game are the ones most likely to suffer technical problems. Rise of Lyric isn't fundamentally broken or unplayable, it's just 
thoroughly disappointing and unpolished. And while it does have some fun to offer, it's fun that's been done in countless similar games. Meanwhile, critic Don Sass of other popular video game website GameSpot would state, Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric is a failure at some basic levels of gaming. While it's understandable that a franchise may want to move beyond the simple elegance of its origins, a muddled web of poorly connected and even more poorly executed systems is not the answer. The Sonic name deserves better than this, and so do consumers. Even those who worked on the game weren't satisfied with the final product, with Chris Sen stating, the final experience felt little like the Sonic game I'd hoped for. It just goes to show that there is much more to making something great than having hardworking, talented people, great ideas, and proper financial backing. A wiser fellow than myself once said, sometimes you eat the bar, sometimes the bar, well, he eats you. This reflected many of the views held by those who played Sonic Boom originally and this in turn reflected in its sales. By May of 2015, Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric, along with its 3DS counterpart Sonic Boom Shattered Crystal, which had been outsourced to Sanzaro Games some years earlier, had combined sales of around 620,000 total copies, making them together the lowest selling games in the entire Sonic series history. Sega themselves would even comment on both this and the overall poor perception of the Sonic franchise at this point. In an interview with the popular Japanese gaming magazine Famitsu, Sega Japan's CEO Haruki Satomi would say, We did our best to build a relationship of mutual trust with older fans of Sega, but looking back there have been some titles that have partially betrayed that trust in the past 10 years. Big Red Button did make a few attempts at damage control. The most notable of these came in January 2015, when the studio released an over 1 gigabyte large downloadable update batch for Sonic Boom on Wii U that was aimed to fix many of the issues still present in the game. Despite this patch fixing many of said issues, many still felt that they were left with an overall unfinished product. Things only got worse for BRB from here. In the months following Sonic Boom's release, Big Red Button co-founder Bob Fi reportedly got letters from many longtime Sonic fans claiming that he had ruined their childhood. More layoffs occurred, and it seemed that the company itself was at the risk of going under. Those at Big Red Button who stayed remained with the promise of new projects coming soon, but this took longer than expected. Finally though, a project did come, but it took the company in a direction that was unexpected. It was a virtual reality game called The Ark Slinger, a shooting game for smartphones and PCs with western and sci-fi elements. Upon its release in 2016, this title was a critical and commercial success for BRB, and as of 2019, this game development company is still working on new titles, with new original games planned for the future. Despite the issues during Sonic Boom's development, not all was bad at BRB, as is obvious from Skarsted. It's a really unique place, like Bob's from Naughty Dog and Jeff's been at like the, the EA and Activision and things and they're super great at what they do. And it's kind of intimidating, I think, for some of the other people. Bob's like super into getting the animations just right. So it's, it's kind of a unique place and I think they kind of had, had their hits and misses. BRB may have turned itself around financially, however, Sonic Boom still remains the most critically and commercially unsuccessful game to ever be released in the Sonic series. Perhaps it's a title that will always be associated with and taint the reputation of Big Red Button Entertainment, but only time will tell. Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric and its development is the story of a team who wanted to offer something truly new and original for a classic series. However, in the process of trying to reach that goal, they got in way over their heads, and by the time that they realized that that was the case and that they were going to be delivering a product that was perhaps not up to snuff, it was too late. However, whether Sonic Boom had the potential to be a modern classic, or whether it was doomed from the start, 
That's for you to decide. This is the art of failure.